wild, weird, amazing, and caught on video. This week on Wild and Weird Amazing Videos, we're building castles in the sky and on the ground in Germany where sand castles are all the weird rage. It's a dog's life in Buenos Aires where the local pups are living large. From there to London where baby, baby, this baby has his own custom CDs. A Swiss restaurant where they start with dessert. That's weird. That's why we like it. Water skiing, ah, uh, the ultimate sport. It's like sledding, hang gliding, and gymnastics all rolled into one and then drenched. Water skiing is a wet sport. There's no two ways about it. It's all wet, this sport. wonder what the heck is this guy running from? I never did do a thorough security check on this water skier. We're keeping a close eye on this guy. He won't get away. Man, that must not feel too good. Maybe he'll do that again. I sure hope so. Anything for a wild and weird photo op. Watch closely. Some of these athletes have been known to achieve a height of two feet. What do you think? When he skis into shore, do you think he'll plop down and make a few sand castles? He would if he were in Germany. Check it out. Building sand castles is no longer something just for children. Germany's Sand Sculpture Festival on the Baltic Sea Coast has attracted more than 70 international artists. The four-week-long festival is opened in the Baltic Sea Resort town of Travemundi near Lübeck and is bound to attract not only little children on holidays. An area of 15,000 square meters has been dedicated to tell the medieval story of the port city of nearby Lübeck by building scenes and buildings from that time out of sand. But it's not just any sand. River sand has to be used because it's very young and the grains have edges. Sea sand is much older and the wind and water make the grains round. If you press the sand together in a wooden mold, it can get very strong, strong enough to sit on without breaking. Seven thousand tons of specially made sand have been imported from the River Moss in the Dutch town of Quick. The sand is then mixed with water and pressed into the wooden molds until it dries. Once the wooden molds have been removed, artists can get to work on the sand blocks using a variety of tools. Special tools were used to cut the sand, 
from cement trowels for large areas to small palette knives and even paintbrushes for detailed work. The sand has to be kept moist to be carved, and sculptors used water spray bottles and hoses as they worked. Only sand and water have been used to create the sculptures. Once finished, the structures are generally not damaged by the elements. Rainwater is absorbed by the sand and evaporates when it stops raining, leaving the structure intact. As the sand has been compressed so hard, the wind does not damage the sculptures either. The idea behind the project is to build a great sand sculpture, something that will really astonish people and give them something to remember. In the evenings, there's a sound and light show, which combines for a very impressive experience. Please, can we stay and see the parade? Here comes Mickey. There's Pluto. Hey, Goofy. What wouldn't do for our faithful four-legged friends? In Argentina, they do a lot. Hairdressers and home and personal walkers. This is the daily lot dogs in Buenos Aires have to bear. Dogs are kings in Buenos Aires. There are nearly a million in the Argentinian capital. Diana is one of them. Diana is one of the privileged few, for every week she has her bath at home. Get out, please. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to make an appointment. Yes, your full name, please. Maria Gabriela Espinosa. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. See you later. For the last five years, the company Get Out Fleas, with its fleet of four highly equipped minivans, has been offering a home grooming service. The two employees, a qualified groomer and an assistant, do not set foot inside Diana's mistress's house. Everything's done inside the van. Diana will be entirely taken care of, cherished and cosseted. First, she has an ice bath. Everything has been thought of. Warm water for the summer, hot for the winter. After being dried, Diana has a refreshing trim, which is very practical in a city where the summer temperatures easily exceed 90 degrees. A final squirt from an anti-flea product, and after only 45 minutes, Diana is returned to her mistress. Before, I used to bathe Diana myself, and it wasn't really very practical, especially in winter, because I washed her in the bath, and then she dirtied all the house, and I had to wash the bathroom from top to bottom. The two groomers take care of a dozen dogs a day. Prices for a bath and cut vary from $20 to $60, depending on the dog's size and the thickness of its coat. The van is totally independent, with a 500-liter water tank for the shower and a generator for the tools. Like I always say, the only thing we need is the dog. We could even wash a dog in the desert.
In Buenos Aires, you can find driving groomers and even itinerant walkers. Daniel is a professional walker. Every day he stops off at people's houses to pick up their dogs. He heads for the large parks on the outskirts of town for collective walks, which are inevitably a little turbulent. Today, Daniel has 25 dogs. Sometimes he even has 10 more. He knows them all perfectly, the cool ones, the nervous ones, the problem ones. He organizes his pack according to each dog's character. This is essential if he wants to avoid fights and panic among the packs of dogs. Daniel is the real leader of the pack, which obeys his every look and gesture. Even when off the lead, the dogs never go far from him. As midday approaches, each dog jumps into the minivan in a well-established order. Each one has its own place. That one always travels there in that place. He curls up and stays there. That other hairy one normally gets under the seat. The others are all behind, but they swap around to see out of the window. Daniel has a key for each client's house so that he can collect and take back the dogs. For Nero's mistress, a very active young lady, Daniel is a godsend. Nero gets on better with him than with me. He obeys him more. He knows that I'm his mother and that he can do what he likes with me, but he can't with Daniel. It's a tragedy. But no, truly, it's going really well. I'm very happy, and so is Nero. Sometimes there really are days when you would love to have a dog's life in Buenos Aires. They're back, those wild and weird favorites, the clumsiest athletes in history. Well, maybe not in history. The first Olympics in Greece, nobody practiced. Atrocious. But today it's different. Never before have athletes had so many experts around. Before, a person would just walk out their door and run. Not today. Today you need a trainer to walk. These guys sure do. Cycling has become a very popular sport. Training wheels are coming back in a big way. You also get to honk your little horn. The question is often asked, what's more dangerous, snow or water sports? Have you heard of a snow shark? Stop complaining, skiers. But in the end, it's all about grace, timing, and endurance, none of which any of these athletes possess. But they got a lot of nerve, you gotta give them that. Ow, ow, ouch, ow, mm, oh, yeah, oh, big mistake. If you're worried that your offspring's taste in music will be unacceptable to you, then start to indoctrinate him early. Londoner Ian Walker is taking no chance with his son's music tastes and has created the baby's own CD. Nine weeks old Baby Joe's lullabies are daddy's favorites, a mixture of punk classics in lullaby style, remixed by his dad and officially available as Punk Rock Baby CD. Okay, Joe, it's time for bed. Here we go. Ooh, ooh, it's time for bed. Ooh. Yes. It's a sunny afternoon in the Walker's Brixton home, and Ian and Sophie are trying to get their nine week old son Joe to sleep. Okay, Joe. Let's get you to bed and we'll go put some music on. Joe is a happy baby. His parents don't just take extra care over his health and happiness, they're also concerned with his music education. Daddy Ian has made it his special task to make sure Joe's taste in music won't be much different from his own. And that was the beginning of Ian's punk rock baby CD. Ian, a punk himself years ago, took on classics such as London Calling, White Riot, and Sex and Drugs, and Rock and Roll, and remixed them for the tender ears of his offspring.
And they seem to work, sending baby Joe into punk rock dreamland. Ian got expelled from school once after going to a Clash concert, but that never stopped him from returning to the punk scene or from calling his son Joe after Clash frontman Joe Strummer. After indoctrinating baby Joe for nine weeks, Ian is hoping his efforts will pay off. Joe seems to appreciate it, and even if the lullabies don't always have the desired effect on him, the old classics sure seem to work on his parents. Young professionals fed up with London's property prices are turning to a new innovation in the quest for the perfect location, the micro-flat. A 24-year-old marketing manager is trying out cheap inner-city living in a small flat on London's busy Oxford Street, attracting quite a lot of attention. It's another busy day in London's Oxford Street, but what should be a quiet day at home for Helen Kakachi is anything but, as she lives in the Selfridges department store window. Helen attracts a lot of attention, but despite the prying eyes of curious onlookers, she says she's happy. <laughs> she lives in a three-roomed micro-flat, an apartment about two-thirds the size of an average London flat. Microflat is designed as promoting a possible way of allowing young people to beat spiraling real estate prices in London and gain a foothold on the property ladder. While Oxford Street is buzzing with shoppers, Helen goes about daily tasks in the comfort of her own home, much to the interests of the passers-by. Helen was staying at the flat for one week, testing it out and giving feedback to the flat's architects. Unlike the reality TV show Big Brother, she remains free to walk in and out and have friends for dinner. In the street, shoppers had mixed views on the flat. They thought it was an intriguing idea, but would only be of use to young urban professionals. Helen also gets some privacy. When she goes to bed, she can shut the blinds. But those car horns will still drive you crazy. Danielle Guni has never done things like everybody else, so she decided that her restaurant would be back to front. Diners begin by doing the washing up, and the meal, of course, starts with the dessert. In the small village of Bonviar in Switzerland, nothing at first glance seems strange, and yet when you look closer... Well, I decided to make them eat back to front. They start with coffee and finish with the aperitif. In this universe, where even the time goes backwards, it's totally normal that nothing is normal. Here, this is how we lay a table. Upside down is the right way round. Up is at the bottom, footsteps are on the ceiling, and the glasses are upside down. As for the chairs, to be cleared away, they have first to be untidied. A bit like the owner, in fact. Well, first of all, hola, that's hello, back to front. The first names are written on a small card and you have to find your place without helping your friends. A back to front meal has to be reserved with the list of first names. That gives me time to put the names on cards, back to front, of course. So when you get here, you have to start by finding your place. Then we select one person, often indicated by the person who reserved. And as we are back to front, we get them to start with the washing up, which is totally logical, don't you think? And all in good fun, the washing up of the dishes, not yet dirtied, is done. Unless you have to expect anything here. 
So after having had the liqueur, coffee, or tea, and dessert, a meal finally arrives, in this case a copious meat fondue with a selection of meat and sauces. This will put you back to rights, or at least put your ideas back into place. What do you think? Why not? We can't always be the right way around. <laughs> the meal is coming to an end, and so the aperitif drink is on its way. Yet another chance to give a toast, to wish each other a good evening. Oh, sorry, I meant to say, in the dug, while waiting for the bill. When it's time for the bill, I do it back to front, of course, with the numbers back to front, which means that some people are really surprised because they look at the total first, and a total of 359 francs is transformed into a total of 953 francs. Some people really get cross before they realize that the bill is also back to front. All the more funny for being in Swiss francs. 